Thank you very much. Can you dim down the light, please? That would be appreciated. How are you? Are you good? Are you awake? Have you had coffee? Have you had chocolate? Have you had all the good stuff out there? The ice cream? Amazing ice cream. So, reality is, Hell, open the hatch port, hell. I'm sorry, Dave, I cannot do that. Hell, open the hatch port. I'm sorry, Dave, there's been a computer malfunction. You all know this movie, right? A Space Odyssey. Who know the movie of The Space Odyssey? And the rest of you haven't watched it. You have to watch it, it's amazing. So when I was five years old, my mother, who's an artist, she thought it was a great idea to actually let me watch this movie, five years old. And I can tell you, the one of you who watched this movie is a pretty scary movie. There is monkeys, there is the evolution of man, there is the space and all that. But actually, this thing with the space, even then I was scared to death, almost. I really got inspired from it. So, imagine you go to the International Space Station. You sit down, you have a casual conversation. You have a coffee at the... the coffee machine, and you actually check in, maybe you go to Mars, to your next travel, something intergalactical, right? Or maybe you even go as far as sitting in a beautiful spaceship with beautiful space stewardesses with funny hats, even funny space food. What a wonderful thing, right? You look at them being weightless, walking around the room, totally amazed like that. Or, if you are lucky enough and you actually go to space yourself, you have a golden space suit. And imagine, put yourself in the mindset of a five-year-old and think how amazing this is. This is something that is deeply inspirational for all of us. And actually, Arthur C. Clarke, who was uh, actually one of the consultants on this movie, he also already at that time, at a very early stage, looked at how the future would be. And here we have the future from our glass telephones, ladies and gentlemen. We all have the glass telephone. How, how far away from the body is it right now? Is it 30 centimeters or is it in your pocket? You will probably feel it next to you because it's a very secure thing. Um, so this is obviously a future perspective. So this is your FaceTime or your Skype and so on for that future. But what is interesting about this, and this is where the design comes into the picture. Look at this picture. This is one of the final scenes from this movie. And what movies and what something that has been created in 1969, well, released in 1969, many, many years underway, has actually inspired. If you look at this picture very carefully, and you look at this next picture, which is Philip Stark's Hudson Bar from the Hudson Hotel in New York from around 1990. There you have it. Can you see? I go back, and here. So this is what movies and this is what something that is done, you know, 45 years ago can actually predict what the sign will be. And this is how we find our inspiration. And I can't say i am not been, you know, much different because when I did my first commercial project, by the way, called NASA, in 1997, it looked like this. You can see it, right? So a total inspiration as well, copying the world of it, maybe not as much as Stark did, with a total set off, but at least the universe from it. And um, it was very easy because I was very young and I could actually, I designed this place myself and I also owned it. So I can tell you many stories about the, the combination of strawberry margarita and a white nightclub. It's a very bad idea. Very, very bad idea. I was actually scrubbing, you know, all the sofas from strawberry margarita and the green mint, stuff like that. And after two weeks we said, okay, let's take the color out of the drink. But it also suited much more with the, with the environment of this. So the way you draw inspiration is very important. And this making this nightclub many years ago also made me realize what is important to me as a designer. It is not really, you know, to do something expensive. It's not to do something fancy. But it is to take you out of your normal comfort zone for the two hours of drunkenness, hopefully, you will have at my nightclub, and, um, and take you out to a third place. And that is really what, you know, design is about. So, what I found out very quickly, that is, domestication is what we're talking about here. And just to explain domestication, so imagine you have a wolf, you know, a wolf like, right? Or maybe, you can put the expression on it, right? That's a wolf, and you walk in the park, and there's a wolf coming, and you're like, oh, it's a dog. No, it isn't, it's a wolf. It bites you, you get rabies, and you die. Okay, you get me? So domestication is taking something that seems very you know, out of not making sense, difficult for you to understand, and domesticate it and make it into a golden retriever instead. 
A golden retriever is a nice family dog, you know, you can play with them, you can throw a ball, everybody understands it, no problem. So this is domesticating something that for us as designers might seem totally obvious, but it not, might not be for the people who have to use it. The second thing is experience. The reason why you design and the why you're attracted to design is because of the experience you get from the design. So this is something that's been very important in my work for my whole life and also in our company that actually focuses very much on domestication of experience. Are you with me? Excellent. Good. So, give you some examples. For instance, in experience, here we have a restaurant we designed a couple of years ago in Taiwan, in Taipei. And in China, in many Asian countries, you have the typical water element, an onyx ball that rolls in water, a water wall or something. And it's really good for feng shui, and it's very, very good for the business, because water means money um, in Asian culture. So we thought, okay, we will put that water element in the back room next to the safety deposit box, with the Buddha on the side, of course, because that is very important. Um, and the feng shui master completely said, yes, you can do a digital waterfall. So what you see here is actually a 20 meter long, semi-transparent digital waterfront, or waterfall. Um, so you can see this is a rendering from before opening, and what actually comes afterwards is a, a real time uh, waterfall effect from, uh, from, the, from, um, from this big waterfall. And you can see the chefs behind preparing the food, making very spicy food that makes like small explosions also in your mouth and so on, right? So that is one kind of experience. Another one is saying, okay, one day a client comes and says, can you design some cupcakes for us? And we said, of course we can. I can also tell you stories about how much weight you gain from designing cupcakes. It's a very bad thing to do. But nevertheless, we designed some very, very beautiful cupcakes. And this is about domesticating something that might be very girly and making it more Scandinavian, because I am Scandinavian. So here you see an example of something that has been very girly before, and now we made it much more you know, straightforward towards that. Same goes if we do big interior designs like these villas in, the, in, the, in the China as well, in Hainan, where you know, I go straight into designing bathtubs and actually thinking about one thing is the house, but how is it on the inside? Inside is very important for what we do. If we do architecture, it's the same thing. This building, as an example, is only focused around what is on the inside, and it is only food. So if you make a food building, it has to be accessible, it has to be both domesticated and giving you that experience. It's a very important thing. So what am I actually talking about here? I'm talking about, I run a practice. We do many, many different kinds of things uh, in, the in the world as well, and we work in multidisciplinary, and all that is very nice. But what I'm talking about here is also to give you a little bit of the background of why do I do what I do. Now, many years ago, you see this picture. You see, one of the guys, the, the, the curly-haired one, that's me, a bit younger, and the other one is my brother. And to tell you a bit of a family story, are you ready for a family story? Excellent, good. So, our father, um, he came, he did a lot of traveling, right? So, reality of his travel has been that my mother is Danish-Swedish, my brother's mother is German, my sister's mother is French, and if you see anyone sitting next to you that looks a little bit like me, curly and talkative, it might be my sibling. So please, you know, get them backstage to me afterwards, right? So we can have a conversation about family relations. Um, and obvious, uh, my father, he did that first to my mom because I'm the oldest of, of you know, all the siblings. And, and what he did, he was traveling out of a country with a green hat and a guitar. Where would he be from? Green hats, guitars, a lot of talk. Ireland, exactly. So he went to my mother and said, hey, bring, pregnant. And he did it over and over and over again. And he made, uh, I think he's been traveling a lot, so I have probably a lot of siblings. So please look around, it could be. No, but to tell you a bit about this, the reason why for you to understand what I'm going to talk about, music is a very important part of me as well. And together, my brother and I have done a lot of music. And one of the songs we have done, I'm just going to play for you. So maybe the younger generation of you uh, recognize it and can, can applause afterwards. Okay? You ready? Excellent. Easy now, no need if you go down, rock that run, that... Applause. Nice. Very good. You're very good. So, the fact is here, because I come from a different family, you can hear, I also grew up in a different place. And I will be very frank with you, I will show you a family picture from my childhood. Are you ready for that? You will see on this picture that I'm the most fashionable person on the picture at all. Are you ready for that? Are you sure about this? Okay. So, yeah, this is very important. You can see here, um, 
exactly that year, red was totally in trend. You know, I, I was very fashion conscious, red underwear, red socks, red carry-on wagon, and so on and so on. So I grew up in a hippie camp in Denmark, because, you know, Danish people are very um, flexible about things. And what I learned there, very important, is that, you know, everybody is able to communicate with each other, because hippies are very free-thinking, very talkative, and very, uh, maybe not that efficient in doing things. Um, Effectively, there, there's actually, yeah, you see there's an old drum picture as well here from my musical career. But what important is here is that what you do in your life is also about creating experience for other people. Yeah, those tits, I'm sorry about that. They had them all over the place all the time. So, going from here, because we're running out of time, right? He's looking there, sir. So, going from there. I worked for Bang Olsen. I actually stopped last fall because, you know, after four years in one company, you have to be careful how much you get absorbed into the soil of that company, and you have to be free of your mind. And you'd better do that with doing your own things. But what is interesting, every time I took the train from this hippie camp in Rutschel part of Jutland, you know, Jutland is the part of Germany that is Danish, right? Yeah. Is up in the corner. So we took the train with my mom, and every time we went through a small village called Struhr in Denmark, it was like, ding, ding, ding. next station is Struhr. I thought, home of Bang and Olofsson. I was really impressed about it. It was like, I dreamt about this sci fi environment, and I actually dreamt so much about it that I thought Bang Olofsson's factory would be exactly like, like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. On Palumbus, dun, 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 dun. we're gonna build magical products, and so on and so on. And the CEO would be, you know, Willy Wonka. But he, he wasn't really, he was more like a McKinsey guy, which is also kind of Willy Wonka's anyway, if you look at the big perspective. There's many, many uh, consultants in this room, so I'm sure, sure about it. But what is interesting about that, as a Danish designer, it might be the biggest honor you could have to work for a company like that. Actually, a fact is, when the founder of Sony, for many years ago, he went to the Seville, uh, Seville uh, World Expo, there was a Bain Olsen stand, and he came in, and everybody knew who he was, he walked in, and he looked at this Beomaster 1900, and he said, oh, looked at it and said, oh, should I show you how it works? The consultant sat there, he said, no, no, I have it at home in Tokyo. So the founder of Sony has Bain Olsen at home, you've done something right, agree? I mean, Sony is like a fantastic company. So I thought, I, I got hired to help this company turn around. The first thing I did was looking at the past, looking at the present and looking at the future, because nobody had done that before. Bang Olsen was like an you know, a open book of opportunities to, to create something. It was also in a very bad shape, honestly speaking, so we needed to get it at least not economical, I can't do that, but creatively to the top again. So, and here comes the interesting thing, and that is domestication. Because, ladies, you know, when your boyfriend or your husband Say, darling, we need some new speakers for our living room. You're like, oh shit. I'm gonna look for that, you know, I'm gonna look at that monument standing in the corner of the living room for the next 20 years like this. I'm a speaker. Right? And then you turn off the music. La, 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 la. It's just standing there, it doesn't do anything. It's just a decorational element of, of blackness standing. So we thought, okay, we need to create something that is much more, you know, alive. So we created the brand called BNO Play which is something I will show you a bit about. And what we did here with, with one of the first products was this one, it's called the A9. And this is not a speaker. I'm a speaker now, right? <clears throat> this one is like a... <laughs> touch me, touch me, touch me! As a matter of fact, you have to touch it because otherwise you can't control the volume. So you have to actually pet it like this. And it's like, yeah, fuck yeah, touch me more! <laughs> and this is really the, the, the point about doing these kind of products. And this is what I'm talking about by domesticating something, making it something you want to interact with. Not like a standing in the corner. So that is one thing. Of course, beautiful detailing. Also, a lot of products that you can actually wear. And uh, mind you, I do not work for Bangalore anymore. I'm just taking this as a case. So don't, yeah, yeah, okay, buy the products afterwards. Buy it, actually. They need the money. So <laughs> making products that are more domesticated, making something that you want to wear. Every time I see something, somebody on an airplane and I see these headphones, I, I become very happy. Same goes for the speaker range. You can see on your left, you have the old speakers. On your right, you have the new speakers that people want to buy because they are make more, much more, you know, how can I say, domesticated, something you want to touch. So this is what was my job in Bangalore, remotes, televisions as well. But what is very important in this is, of course, thinking about 
how you can create something that is larger than the sum of its mass. And experience of the retail, because what I believe in the future of retail is not all this omni-channel talk, because omni-channel is like, we have to touch all the consumer touch points on, and that is absolutely true. But if you are a retailer, and if you sell a product that people want to touch and feel, you have to create something truly special. When I started there, this was not very special. It was the old store design, many years. It was good for what it was, but we had to change it. So that was the first thing I did as well. We did a lot of exploration in how to m maximize the square meters. We did a lot of technical stuff, because what I believe in, Bang & Lawson has always been about one thing, and that is mechanical magic. It's something that touches you. You know, you put your hand to a glass door and it does like, shoo, shoo, like that. It's kind of magical. And getting that magic into a store design was very, very important for the brand, in my belief anyway. So we did a big project where we actually explored all the mechanical magic of Bang & Lawson and implemented it into what I call the Cathedral of Bang & Lawson. And now it becomes a little bit religious. But actually, it isn't, because I believe that if you don't do something that is cathedral, you kind of miss out the point of creating something that is larger than the sum of its mass, right? Are you with me still? Good. Old store design, and this is, one, is a new one. And what we did here, you can see it's a very domesticated you know, space. It's, it's nice wood, leather, metal, stone, so on, so on, so on. Uh, beautiful zones where instead of having a cash register and a guy sitting looking dull like that, we did something that is more open for people to actually interact with. Same go to the back room where you can get demonstrations, try the equipment, we designed a furniture collection fitting for the store, and for Bang Olsen as well. And then we looked into the experience, because when you buy a television, typically it looks like this, right? Come into stores, like 55 hertz, blah, 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 blah. And we're just like, no, we can't do that. We need to do something that is different. So we did these, I call the rotating platforms, and when we did design this, I have to explain from the engineers, actually doing chai tea. I said, it be very slow, because they were like, it doesn't work. It's not magical. And what happens here around the world, this is a Shanghai flagship store, is that typically, you know, a, a very typical rich Chinese man will walk in, you can recognize a very big watch, typically, tall woman, not their wife, walk into the store, pointing at, you know, at, at the stand and saying, how much is that? And they would say in the store, uh, which one, the TV? No, no, the whole thing. So in China, they want to actually buy the rotating wall as well. For me, that is a success parameter of dimensions, I can tell you. Same goes for the speaker wall. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. You want to buy shoes, your husband want to buy this instead. The same thing we have here is actually a speaker wall where you can scan with a QR code and you can get straight to the speakers and listen to the music. So this was a part of the experience. But when I talk about the cathedral of Bang Olsen, we did that by building a building independent one. This one is in Denmark, it's in Herning. You see, it's a, it's a nice piece of architecture. Uh, you know, has some nice features, built in the walls and the floor and so on and so on. But what it really does, and this is my final point, it is domesticates the experience. You have the church in the background, by the way. So Jesus is with Bang Olsen. But also, you can go to the window, scan a QR code, and you can take control of the store for five minutes. And I didn't believe it, because they said there was a time where it broke down, and I was like, it breaking down? No, people call in and say, it doesn't work. And uh, they said, you have to come, because people are having a party with your store. I was like, okay, that's great. So last summer, I went there, this small village, I know the music is going to start in five seconds, so please go on, but quietly, right? Um, we simply started not believing in it. The local nightclub is called Crazy Daisy, and it closed at 3 a.m. in the morning, six pack of beer, Walking down there, and I came, there was 30 people having a party with the Bangalore store. Playing their music, playing their videos, having a party with the store. This is what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. The cathedral of your brand. That is what you have to do. You can never survive in the future world of branding without taking your brand serious enough to make it something that is bigger and larger than some of the market.